Okay, perfect. Um, yeah, I think I would just debate from the usual, and then I will start the presentation, but I would want you to ask me in the middle, like to stop me, or I will ask you. So, uh, let's just do this. This way, okay, let's see. Do, do you see my screen? No. Don't, right? No. I'm sorry. Sell all my. She got stuck. I may need to restart since sorry apologies for that so I'm I will come back <laughs>
Hello? Okay. Can you hear me? Yeah. Great. So you see my screen, right? So I, I am not seeing the window. So someone, somebody, confirm. I I can't see thumbs up. Yeah. Yes, we can see. Yep. Okay. So this was just a talk sometime I gave, um, and I'm just going to start. So again, I will share so you will be able to see. And the usual, I'm sure you have seen this one. It's a lot more about probability is a mathematical theorem, um, sorry, a mathematical framework for representing uncertain statements. Right? Mathematics in itself is unable to handle uncertain statements, but it's, it's derivative. Statistics um, is able to deal with it. so the part of statistics that is entirely is mathematics. So that means it uses just mathematical spaces, mathematical things, um, and then on on top of them builds a statistical um, framework such that it can. It's like just like physics, like it, so that it it handles certain aspects of. Um, uncertainties that means and that in itself is a very interesting it's in its own because how do you formulate uncertainty in mathematics right so this the the mathematical aspect of it is actually or the um, so there's a semantic and then there is the um, uh, synthetic part so normally the synthetic parts of mathematics are just the usual you know numbers one two three whatever symbols we call them and and then on so you use like the formalism some form of uh, you know putting together and defining what is a sum what is a product and what is associations and then based on that you know every uh, and then some axioms you know some new theories of mathematics in this case statistics would be developed so to develop the statistical part of it what happens is that you you need some form of collections what you know how you organize it's basically still you use the synthetic aspect of mathematics and that's it so the synthetic aspect of statistics has nothing got to do with you know interpretations but the semantic aspect of it the semantic when we say semantic you now by now you know it means the interpretation of it the interpretation of it is a philosophy and sometimes you might have, you know, defining a philosophy of, for example, probability is a very different in different areas. So if you have heard frequentist and Bayesian, for example, these are two contenders. And a lot more mathematicians probably would like frequentist because it's really defining in the limit sense. So that means when you have something very a lot, if you happen or if, if you take some the limits of something, then you start understanding, you know, frequency. That means you can understand the probability in the sense of like, if I have this coin and I, you know, spin it or throw it like uh, an infinite time, how often would I observe whether it is head or tail? And then you say, oh, if it's a fair coin, it's going to be um, one half. But that's a, a mathematician way of looking at it. But then there is an actually, uh, data or data driven or data based of um, statistics interpretation that's called bayesian a bayesian is basically identifies uncertainty as a degree of belief because it's about humans and the data is about how much it's all usually uh, finite so the interpretation is a lot more it is more you know what is the degree of belief and then they try to be objective about belief uh, in part but if you really are so the, the usual examples are, you know, if you are a believer that tomorrow will be uh, rain, your probability of rain is one in Beijing. But of course, you know, your prior is very, very like bad. So that's why there's another concept called your belief 
depend is it can be a delta function. A delta function means something that really spikes at one point and everything is zero. And you can have a belief like that. No one can change your belief. It's statistical. So it, it is really, as you can see, you can talk about an actual belief. And if someone really believes that their probability is a delta function, something, you can't change them. However data you give them, it's it's impossible to change. So Bayesian statistics provides that. So anyways, so just to start with that, it provides a means of quantifying uncertainty as well as it provides axioms for driving new uncertain statements. Okay, you can stop me. And as always, it used to be that statistics used to rule the world. It used to be cool. Now it's getting exposed, right? In its own, like uh, people are just, you know, uh, learning and understanding its limitations and therefore it's very highly investigated. And as you can see, it's a high resolution we see and, and, and machine learning is like still coolest and AI is of course the coolest, right? So it's um, more of like, I like this cartoon. And in when we talk of normally statistics, there are many but jargons, but the, it, statistics is by definition, it's very simple. It is really, it has no complex things. It's really just made up of actually three or four rules. You know, it's just the sum rule, the product rule, the, um, and, the, and then the normalization rule, and that's it. It's just, a, it's a very, very, you know, very simple in itself. Yep. Uh, maybe just uh, empty now. You can you can moderate. So if someone has question, you can stop me and allow them to ask. One. Yes, sure. I think I don't think there's no question right now. You can continue. Ah, so there aren't questions. Okay, sorry. Yeah. Uh, okay, so. In sample space, so this is normally like what, if you are thinking of deep learning, you know, your samples can be set of images, and, but at the same time, it's your outputs are also the set of outputs are samples, the set of weights are samples, and in the set of bias values are samples, and, and everything sets of architecture uh, is also samples, right? So in a way by sample, we are talking about samples of things, and as long as you know that you can define them in a set space, that's it. That's a sample space, right? So whenever you think of it, everywhere from the inputs, the x's, the w's, the bases, the architecture itself, anything can be a sample. So sample is you know depending on the sample space. So now it's an architecture space. We call maybe just we call it an architecture space or a weight space or an input space. We define that, but within that space. So that's why that the sample space is one and sample in that. But within each of them, these samples, if they are statistical, then there is what is called random variable. Random variable is actually a function, but let's not get there. But it's like, it is something that defines, it's a variable that is that has a value in that sample space. You know, a particular value from this sample space and named it in that sample space because it's dynamic. You can imagine this random variable is also um, is variable in that sense. But like that's what, what it is. Normally, when you say random variable in your statistical sample space, it is one vari you know, a a variable that represents like you know, a particular thing. And, and then a distribution of it a probability distribution is a description of how likely the random variable is to take on different values of the sample space, right? So this is a very, I know it's simple, but it's everything. When you learn and learn and learn, you'll come back and understand this thing in a very different complex, complex or simple, simple way. Actually, the more, the more you understand it, the more you understand it in a simple sense. If you don't understand it, you will only understand it usually as just, okay, what they mean. Okay, it's a particular value, that. But it is entire meaning is just like it's embedded here. Um, and whenever we think of a probability distribution, you know, in the mathematics, to describe statistics to mathematics, we have to define even this random variable, it has its own space, right? So that's why it, 
then within that space, that random variable space, what it takes is its, distri its probability distribution. And whatever amount it takes, like it will, it will be like in that mathematical space of that random variable, you have, you know, you basically uh, put it there and all the values it defines will define the domain of this random variable. And that domain in one dimensional, for example, variable, then you get all, all usual, just the usual probability distribution you see. Maybe it just is mean at a, what, at a particular point, and then, um, you know, it can be Gaussian and Gaussian and, and all that. Okay, then let's get to, of course, like some uh, brain teaser. And I want your participation, of course, without that, I will not continue. A jar contains five red balls and seven blue balls, right? Suppose, yeah, uh, there was a draw uh, before you came. Just there was a draw, and no one knew. They didn't tell you. So, but I am actually gonna make it this one one, so that it's getting um, easy in the on. Just so that we can make it easy. Let me make it um, this one. Okay. So we call it one, right? It's a jar contains one red ball and seven blue balls. So suppose there was a draw before you came and you didn't know the outcome. And then a second draw is performed and we got, you know, we're given the result. Now, the question is, does the probability of the first draw being red or blue change with the knowledge of the second? Now, knowing it was performed, it was performed some time ago, the, a draw, and now you are given, so, you know, somebody were talking about like, what was the probability of that? Now you came the second one, you know, okay, they, they hold it, it they, they, they considered it the, the variable, just W, okay, that was the probability of, W1 was the probability, that the first draw was um, red. And now the second draw comes and then you see the outcome. Now, does it change that W1? Does the value of W1 change? Yeah, like, please, uh, uh, Ramit, manage. Yes, sorry. Uh, one day, right? You can go ahead. Uh, uh, ma, good evening. I don't think the probability changes. I still think the probability will stay the same because you don't okay. know. Like, yeah, because the probability that uh, it's a it's a red ball will, will always will still be uh, one to eight. Which is. And then the probability that it's a blue ball so it will, will still remain the same because of the fact that you actually don't. Okay, so you, you think W1's value doesn't change? It's constant, okay, that's one data. Yeah. Doesn't change. Okay, others? Abubakar, you can go ahead. Uh, okay, uh, I, I think uh, the probability uh, of knowing the outcome 
would change. So, uh, no, the question you are replacing the question. I'm not. I, I'm not saying. I'm saying, you now see the second result, and I'm asking whether the first, the probability of the first one changes, which the one you didn't see. Okay, so I I think yes. Okay. The probability of the it? first draw, yeah, being red or blue, changes with the knowledge. Why? Why do you think that's the case? Uh, because uh, uh, when we think about it, uh, the first draw would have one over eight probability of being uh, red and being blue seven over eight. So, if we know uh, the fir the the first draw, if it is, if the second draw is uh, uh, if uh, on the second row, if we uh, draw on the first row, we we draw red, and the second row would be would have uh, the hundred percent probability of being blue. So you mean the first one. So I mean, uh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, okay. And what does it tell you? Like, you know, that means something that was happened before has changed. Now, yes, after some time, and what is the implication? Uh, see like there was something and you had kept it it was in your pocket that yeah. w let's imagine you didn't see it and then the second comes in and that value changed without you doing something yeah like, second anyone yeah yeah Abdul Rahman, you can... uh, okay uh, uh it's it actually not changing the the things but uh, changing our knowledge about it so the result is still the same but uh, our knowledge is, is changed okay what does this mean i think it's an interesting uh, formalism so it is true but what does that mean then i mean i think you guys are now getting closer but yeah, so this is interesting. Anyone can ex want to expand? Yeah, time is good. If you want to say something. Yes, uh, so it, the question, uh, yeah, I, I think it does. I think it's changed because if, if the first uh, draw will break, so, that that means the next the second row will be blue and uh, the probability of the the first the first uh, row was red was one over eight and the probability of being blue was seven over eight now we know uh Okay, maybe we lost Tamaskan. Yeah, we're not hearing you, Tamaskan, if you are hearing us. Tamaskan? Okay, maybe okay. we can go to the next person. Yeah. <coughs> Abu Bakr wants. Yeah. Yeah, Abu Bakr. So, like, if, if we think about it, like, knowing the second one, like, might also affect our previous decision or something like that mm -hmm. it's true i mean in part you know of course it makes sense right it, it actually doesn't <laughs> I, I don't know in, in one sense it makes sense like your explanation was correct you know had you, if you didn't know and then you had the first second knowledge the second knowledge being Ah, you got you see you saw red. That's why I made it red one, by the way, just so that people don't get confused. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. Yes, so it's actually not. It's very. very it makes so easy, right? Yes, seeing one red automatically collapses the other one to just really yes, it was blue. It made it from it changed its probability from you know to seven over eight, from seven over eight to one. But in the other sense, 
it is also it doesn't make sense right because in the usual physics and the visual thing that we know it doesn't seem like yeah like how why does the why does it change it, it was already performed you know isn't isn't probability like what we say now the probability wouldn't shouldn't would it have changed it if i didn't see it you know like, so is my observation is is it having an impact you know it, then it leads to this some conundrum like some form of you know dilemma and i think uh abdurrahman may kind of got closer as well in terms of like referring it with exactly with the knowledge update but yeah let's see other opponents yeah Ma michael you can speak up okay uh, i don't think it does because uh, it is related to the the jar like because it, the one red and seven blue balls so uh, if it is like three red and four blue balls maybe that will be 51 49 or 50 50 but the probability of getting red is very low like one over eight in my understanding so getting that will be very low percentage so i don't think it does I mean, what do, what do you mean? I mean, this one is slightly controversial. So what, uh, make it very clear. So is it just because it changed from uh, 7 over 8 to 1 versus if it were 2 red, for example, it would have been 7 over 9. From 7 over 9, it would have changed to 1, like to uh, 7 over 8. So is is this change not good enough why, why why do you think that's the case what i mean in the the one red in table blue matters more than the probability of the first row if you you know yeah, yeah um but no but the question is does it change the first probability the question no. is about the first probability so you're so yeah great I think this is where you can see the philosophy of statistics gets interesting as aspect of you cannot this it is this is the interpretation of it if probability was a constant then of course it would not have changed in the sense of frequentist way of the usual statistics this thing would not have changed right in a way that it is not about this particular outcome. Zero is just a special case, but it just basically shows uncertainty, but not whatever. But in the case of Bayesian sense, Bayesian means update to the knowledge. In the Bayesian sense, that means we are updating the knowledge. And it doesn't matter if the previous one, whether we don't, time probability is not temporal. That means it doesn't care about time. It is free of time. What it cares is about the knowledge updated. And if the knowledge was not updated in the first one, it is as if nothing happened. There is no probability or there is no, there is nothing that is going on. Like nothing has happened from Bayesian perspective. Because you didn't know, that's it. Knowledge was not updated. Beliefs were not updated. While on the second one, knowledge is updated it doesn't matter when the time doesn't matter from a bayesian perspective what matters is the event so in the bayesian sense you talk about event and whether an event happened or not an event in a bayesian sense means something that updates knowledge so if an event that updates knowledge happens then you say that event merits right so that means because you update your knowledge but if you don't that's it you don't so from these two interpretations, you get two different results. And in the Bayesian sense, yeah, it didn't matter. Time it has no, it has no time dependence. It is about events that happen that update. And that, so the, the time, the temporal sense, that means is about events that occur based on knowledge of update. So the sequence of time is the update of knowledge. And it is only the, the true time in Bayesian sense is a knowledge update event. While in a frequent sense, it is a philosophical argument that says 
you know, if I measure it this one again and again and again and again, what happens? So it doesn't answer this kind of questions. It tells you, yeah, it's like, it's just whatever you ask me, I don't care. I'm just going to tell you that number. Um, and this is, this won't be addressed. Okay. I'm going to skip from here. Hopefully this gives you, uh, it, it, it will make you appreciate that sometimes meanings influence. They're not just only philosophy, but also how we do, especially when it comes to data analysis that matters. So that means we will not, if you are thinking in a Bayesian sense, then you will not care about time, things like this, this way of phrasing, but you only take, you only take um, um, all about the knowledge update. Now, in the same way now, yesterday's question was the same. Now I'm going to ask you the very, actually that question was, um, first was asked a long time ago in a TV show and the TV show called Monty Python. And in the Monty Python, the Monty Python is, um, you know, a, a TV host and it has gods, but I'm going to define them to be just two, some useless items, stones behind two doors and behind one other door, there's a diamond, a one kilogram diamond. Okay. Now you are in the show, you are invited to the show and you are, you know, the game follow is like as follows. The Monty Python comes and it will ask you, you know, choose one. And the, you don't know that they are very random. So you don't know then the, the, just for the sake of simplicity, let's label the doors A, B, C. You know, door A, door B, door C. And you now chose door A because it's just random, you know, okay, label doesn't matter. You can call them um, X, Y, Z or anything you want. And then you just chose, okay, you know, one of them. And let's call the one you chose to be A. Now, Monty Python has a game because it wants to make it interesting. It comes because it knows also the, you know, behind each of them, you know, behind each door, what it, what they contain because it knows, you know, you, you know, the game the host knows. And then it says, you, okay, friend, I'm going to actually eliminate B and I'm going to give you, it's either A or C. But when whatever eliminates, he knows that, that, that the one that eliminates contains uh, rock. Now you have, a, you have to choose your second. Do you change? Now let's just again talk. Yep, Hans, um, Remet. Thomas, can go ahead. Yes, uh, well, my answer is not, uh, uh, not it's not mine, but I've seen it in a, in a movie. That's it, exact question. So the answer goes: the first uh, when it is it is for three doors, the probability of me choosing the diamond was thirty three percent. After four hundred, thirty three point three or something. Then when eliminate the second door, the probability of me getting the diamond is now sixty six percent. And uh, I think for me personally, and the, the conclusion of the, that uh, is seen, I would, choose, I would stick to my, my first choosing. Because I, <laughs> even, after, after, even, even if after you see all this, after even getting the numbers, you still choose, okay, uh, let's hear from yeah, others. I, I think this is a different scenario, but yeah. So it, anyone else? Does anyone stay with their, and can they explain why? And if they change, why they change? Okay, uh, Henok. Okay, uh, so I am thinking just like uh, Thomas Kahn said, the first one has a probability of uh, one in three. And uh, the second choice, when you take out the door B, then you, you, there are two choices. The first choice, you've already chosen it, it's one third. 
but the second choice, uh, choice C, would have a 50% probability. Again, that's wrong. The two choices. No, no. See, that's that's where everyone gets it wrong. That that's not a correct state. I mean, in a way, that's where I, I want to stop you. In a way, that 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 seems the case, but what is happening in the probability is slightly more than that. I mean, Tamaskan, uh, was that uh, Henok or Tamaskan? I don't know. Are you Tamaskan? So Hainok. the previous. Henok, I'm the... Henok. Okay, Tamaskan was saying he read it somewhere, it's 66.6%, per 66 .6%, not 50. And, and that is correct. How is that correct? Can you explain how it's 66? Exactly. Let, 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 let this, yesterday I explained it. So I want the reason why I brought this question back today is the same. So let's hear from others. Okay. Why is it? Why is 66.6%? Uh, .6%? Wandera, you can go ahead. Uh, I, I would. Uh, I wouldn't change, uh, and I, I, I would remain with uh, the one I selected because uh, I don't have knowledge on, uh, like, uh, I've already selected it, so I wouldn't change it. And also, yeah, the, the probability that, the, the probability is now 66%, because, because... Which one uh, is 66%? Both of them. No, they can't be 66%, both of no, them. No, that's no, also okay. one of them, the one you have selected, sorry. The one you have selected. The, the one you have the selected is not. Yeah. Uh, its probability has not been updated. So that's also the problem. The what? The one you select. It will not update. It will not update. You, you, the, the one three. you select, the one uh -huh. you select, like door A, will uh, will still be its probability thirty three point three percent. But in total, in total, both of them is sixty six percent. No, it's like the other one, of course, would be. Uh, now I'm telling you the answer, but I just want others to explain why. The other one is. The other one, which is door C, which is remaining, has actually a probability of 66.6%. How? Oh, no, the, the other one that, that is remaining has a familiar. Yes. So, so you're saying, so you're saying that, uh, that, that the remaining two are probability of 33.3%. The remaining two. No, I think that in, like, as I said, I think in the question I said, the person knows, the game player knows where things are. So when the, he eliminates door B, he knows that has a chance of, like, basically it was rock, right? So it, he knows that. So now it's oh. between the two. So now it's between so, the two. Yeah, I, personally, I, I, I wouldn't change. I'll just remain with, with my decision because I don't have, I'm not, uh, there's no certainty that if I changed, there's no. <laughs> there's I, I like that. There is no is certainty. Right? We are talking about everything uncertain. There is definitely no certainty. Absolutely. Yes, but it is okay. about probability. It is about probability and our feeling, you know, our our association to probability. Like, how do we feel about probability? Even now, Can after I? telling, yeah. No. Uh, uh... Yeah, do you think that uh, the probability of one changing is determined by by like other external factors? No, in this case, it's very silly. like let's let's be rational. Like, so it's it's just the rational aspect of it. So, like, it, I mean, normally this is this is a lot more about human elements. So the reason why statistics is not human science that means it's not natural to humans because humans' intuition goes against the probability and there is a very good book and i recommend everyone to read this book uh, because i think that is probably one of the very well written book in my opinion it's called the um, uh, thinking fast and slow and in this book you would you would know a gambler how they see like if you go to let's say a betting a uh, sports betting how you gamble you're not rational if you had hundred dollars and you you won another hundred because you bet hundred dollars and you won hundred dollars another one and now you have two hundred dollars 
And then if someone asks you like, can you bet now that $200, you'll be like, no, 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 like, I'll take my time. When you win, it changes your feeling to a, as a human to be less risky because you won. But if you had $400 and if you come now and if you are in a sports bet and you, you bet 200 and you lost and you are only remaining with 200, now the actual value is the same. You had 200, you're now remaining 200. But your risk level, if someone says like, can you bet now 200, you're high likely to say yes, let's bet all in. You become high risky because a loss or losing will make you very much less rational and more uh, riskier. While gain usually makes you more rational and less risky. So, I thought, I thought when, when, when you win, you like you, you, your likelihood of being less rational is higher than when you lose. I mean, it's it's an we will not def, we will not. Uh, this was experimented in all the well and got a Nobel Prize. So that is it's called behavioral economics, and it has been proved again and again and again. People don't do that. So I so for your question, the reason all this extended answer is that yes, people of course are not machines they even if it's something is rational they they may choose something irrational but we're now talking the rational part of it so maybe let's ask others what's their opinion about the monty python so i want to ask why uh, door number c is 66 percent and not a door number a yeah. what i mean about the, the about the, so, the, yeah, the I, first I expression I, I did was i i will explain is, but yes yesterday i explained it by guess my birthday uh with michael so when michael and i were when i asked it it was exactly the same it just it's like the same as i changed it now one from five is the same as the question from yesterday guess my my brother's birthday to to this question right so it is the other one was more like changing it to one yesterday's question is more like one rate instead of five rate so the explanation is the same so but anyone else anyone remembers from the argument why it is 66 percent but my question was, uh, yeah, if I may, yeah. the, if, if, if uh, initially I, I selected C and uh, the game uh, eliminated uh, B, so then the probability of the diamond being in A would be 66% again, right? Absolutely. So the, it's, it, it is, uh, the game favors to the not selected one, uh, the odd. Absolutely, absolutely. That's what it is. It means almost always change. Almost always. always. Change. Yes. And it it sounds exactly what humans don't do. Yeah. And that's what I'm saying. That's statistics. When you want to understand statistics, it is that. It is not about your intuition. It's about what actually goes on. Exactly what your explanation now. Even if you chose B, and then the, the game, whatever uh, the player, like the host, eliminates A, change to C. Just change to C. Change to the next one. When you are given now a smaller opportunity, and it's the only time you might not change, is if the game not didn't added one other option. So if it expanded. The selections, maybe that's a different game. But if it eliminates, just change. So it is exactly these parts of statistics. The more you try to understand just this piece, what, and then earlier I mentioned about that statistics being now not by time what you had in your pocket, but by in the Bayesian sense, it's the update in the knowledge. So as you can see now, the update in the knowledge from the same perspective, what we are saying is that your knowledge has been updated. 
an event occurred when the host gives you a set, you know opened some door or shows you that you know door b is out he updated your knowledge and with the updated knowledge is better than an updated knowledge the previous knowledge so the updated knowledge always tells you change anyone has question yes i work Uh, is that you don't have any question I was okay well, you can go ahead you can get back to it worker I think your mic is not working uh, one day right you can go ahead I want to ask a question. Uh, uh, as as you have as you have mentioned, like earlier in the in the previous example, on this example, you said that when the knowledge base is updated, you're 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 more bound to change your decision. I don't know if that's exactly what you said. Yeah, I mean, it's it's basically it says that yeah, you should change always. But, but I mean, but, but what factor determines that I should always change? Because if if I'm logged I mean, in, it's it, it, exactly uh, earlier as as you were saying, like the probability change, the probability, yeah. the probability is of the second now, like the probability that uh, diamond being in C now is higher. It is sixty six point six percent compared to yeah, but that's the a eight. That's, that's yeah. psychological. That's the way you're feeling. That's just the way you're feeling. It doesn't necessarily mean that. No, no, no. no. Actually that, in that's there. the the way you feel is that one. The number is actually correct. The number doesn't change. How you feel is subjective. Exactly. You change. I don't change. Whatever. That's uh, that's feeling. There is no feeling in this case. Probability is a number. It is just like oh. a number. Sixty-six is greater than thirty-three. That's it. Even if it is. 34 you would change you should change to 34. even if it's not it's not even this one is even by highest right from 33 to 66 but even if it was like a probability of you know 34 percent you should have changed it is not so, a feeling game so so probability is just based of the numbers what the numbers say the numbers exactly. determine and then their uncertainty on the number uncertainty on the number but as long as it's accurate, in this case, it's accurate. So yes, you should change. So okay. there is no feeling associated. It's not about humans. Okay. Okay. And our our thing is very much, you know, it's quite complex. So, uh, but probabilities in that sense, it's all about just numbers. And if the numbers, you know, sig that, that's called significance. What is the significance of it? There's in a statistics, the significance of, you know, the uncertainty. And as long as you you take into account that, and within that the number is larger than the other one, just change. That's the probability of way of saying it. Okay. Are we good with this? Uh, Abu Bakr. Yeah, Abu Bakr. We have two questions. Yeah, Abu Bakr. Okay. So, uh, yeah, I'm also for changing, but uh, my understanding on our first choice it will be uh, one third so having the information like the previous uh, question would we should update and we are not updating like we, it's like we are being stubborn so yeah. so but like my other question is i know it's less probabilistic but what if the first choice was uh, our the price it could be it de probability doesn't tell you because you have 66.63 percent that the diamond is that one it doesn't tell you about that it just tells you in the absence of ignorance that if you choose it in the now if i explain it from a frequency side if you do it more often then you would win 66.6 point of the time uh you would win the diamond compared to 33 percent so of course like it, it might even be 0.1 percent and the, the diamond could be there 
probability is not about where it is. It is about what you should do, decisions. And of course, it's all just, it's only that. The diamond could be on A. I'm not saying the diamond could be on C. But given that you don't know, the most important part you do is to be rational. And, and there is a plateau, I think he really said it well. Getting it right with a wrong method is wrong. Getting it wrong with the right method is right. Of course, in that sense, what he meant is much more of the statistics referring, right? If your methodology is wrong and you get it, it's a chance. So tomorrow, the same thing would make you lose a lot. But if your method is right, then today you might lose. But over time, if it's a repeatable event, of course, you get it right. Now, that thing doesn't apply in life because you, you get only life once. So it may not apply to life or to things that occur only once. And, and this applies all to some things that repeats because statistics is about repetition. But for things that repeat, for example, job search, knowledge, how you learn, whatever, these things repeat over, over, and over, and over. For them, the more rational you become, it says that statistics tells you the right method is more important than the chance. So this is more of a life lesson. Now, I, I, I am just showing more of the statistics part of it, but it really implies that the right method distinguish the right method with the actual achievement. There are different things. So that means getting a diamond is a very different thing than using the right methodology and mindset to choosing the which, which door. So they are unconnected. You know, whether where is the diamond is not yet being, we're not discussing about where is the diamond. It's a proxy to that. But the methodology to choosing which door is a very much such things. And with, by changing, you'd always more or less, if you play it hundred times, you will win most of the times. It's only just telling you that. Is that clear? Okay. Um, should we go to the next person? Yeah. 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 Henok, you can speak up. Okay, uh, so like I, I still don't understand why doesn't the new probability apply to to both of them? I mean, when you take door B, why why does C have a higher probability than A? I mean, yeah. Aren't so let me, let me explain it this this way. So when you chose, so what what you are asking is that what is the person the game host? telling you what does it mean in probability things okay so you are actually asking that question what is that update looks like when a person tells you that i you know okay i am gonna close or i'm gonna open door b which shows that it's a door uh, it is um, a stone what does that mean what is that operator from the operator mathematics things or whatever what is the operation mean what the operation mean is that, so the one part you chose has not been updated its knowledge. The knowledge of that has not been updated. But let's group everything that you haven't chosen into one other category. So the one you chose, and then the one you didn't choose. So you know the one you didn't choose, what was the probability? One I didn't choose? The one you didn't choose. The, the two thirds. Exactly, which is 66.6. So everything you chose, you didn't choose, had 66.6%, two thirds. The knowledge only was updated to that part, not to the first part. The knowledge update happened only on the second part, on the part you didn't choose. And what it did, the person, when it tells you, they, they, they put all of that probability, 66.6% of it, to one, to door C. So whatever they do, that's what they are doing. They are 
you know, it doesn't matter. The label is the label. You can put A, B, C, a respect, you know, it doesn't matter. But the one you choose and the one you didn't choose. And the knowledge update came only on the one you didn't choose. And therefore, it only affects the part that you didn't choose, not the one you choose. Does that make sense? Okay, yes, it does. But uh, for example, uh, if somebody else in the room was asked that question, like after, so he, he makes me choose uh, one of the three doors, I choose door A, and then yes. he closes and he says uh, door B is not it, and then you choose again. And then if he asks somebody else in the room that did not choose first. But it doesn't matter. You go back how to that. No, this not exactly for me. Like, no, no, that's not, the, exactly not this question. No, I understand, but this is that question. Okay. This is exactly that question. If they, whether they chose or not, the only thing it tells you, it doesn't matter who chose. The only thing that is important was there a knowledge update. Does that person's knowledge updated or not? Okay, so if the person was not in the room, it wouldn't apply to them, right? It wouldn't apply to them. But if they were, if their knowledge was updated, it would. Okay, I understand. Okay, great. So, okay. Um, Michael yeah. has. Yeah, Michael. Hi. Okay, so so what if the the judge or the referee doesn't know, like Montehol doesn't yeah, know the, it's different. what it's was behind game. the. So it is okay. a different game. It's a different game. So in that case, then it's more complex. Yeah, okay. Uh, no more questions. Great, okay. So you see like now, whatever we talked, if you I, if I ask you now to formulate it in a mathematical sense, just I want you to write it in probability sense. Where you will struggle a lot is how to define, it's like coding, you know, where do you start? When you are not experienced in coding, you didn't know where to start. Like, do you define a function? Do you just, which package do you import? You know, of course, you don't know things. It's the same here. If I ask you to write it now in variables, you'd be like, what part should I make it a variable? And it's like, which part should I call a function? What should I, you know, how, I de how should I decouple or compose my code such that it is robust, right? It's similar. Here, writing it in a variable would really basically is your learning. The more you are clever, the more you are experienced in, in statistics, the more you can start really putting variables for the right thing. That means you will choose what to make a random variable. Earlier, I mentioned that is those are these things. Your sample space, your random variable, and this distribution. If you know that, you know many, 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 many things. And so even for this, this to translate this game or the Monty Python game into just this is another understanding. That means what should I call a random variable in this sense? You know, there are many things I could have called random variable. The balls themselves, the red ball, the blue ball, maybe the draw. You know, there are many things. What sample space am I going to choose? And and a, a careful choice of choosing a random variable just it solves the problem. In this case, we assign, we assume the random variable, let's call it wi, is the random variable corresponding to drawing of red balls. It's not about the first or the second, that one is the i, but just drawing of a red ball, I call it a random variable of w because I know this change in the sample space. Because as I change and the meta, whatever changes, this W changes. This is just a random variable. And of course, I will know this WI will be one if it's a binomial, you know, it's Bernoulli process. So that's why it's called, but you know, when it, most things are modeled like that through Bernoulli process, and that is called if I then have, if if the W is gonna be one, if the the ball that is selected, so it's a you know as I said, the pro, this is W is a random variable corresponding to drawing of red balls. So drawing of a red ball, when 
the red ball is drawn, then W gets one, and otherwise it gets the value of zero, okay? Then I can write, using just a symbol, I will come to it, a product rule, the probability, this one is on, you know, for this question, right? The probability that at the second row, this I is for when, like the timing, at the second row, that the drawing of the ball being one, which means red, is translated by just the summation rule that says all possibilities, so that means X is in this case two, right? Um, and uh, sorry, look, this X is in this case, the amount of possibilities that I have, like for, uh, at, at this case, is the probability that at the second row, it was one given at the first row, it was some unknown variable X. So I am summing over this unknown variable X because I don't know that unknown variable X times the probability of, this is called the prior. My prior the, or the probability of W that it was X. So this is just, you know, like it doesn't depend on anything. So therefore I have, I have that variable. So that usually is, you know, the probability of one at when it was X is just basically, I know, like it, it's just the, the total probability. It's like, um, in this case, one over, eight, one over eight. But this X, because it, it does, you know, X given probability of, so sorry, probability of uh, W1 being, um, so this W1 is like the probability of the, being great at the first one, if it was one or if it was zero. So if it was one, I know it was one over eight. If it was zero, I know it was um, seven, seven over eight. So zero means basically blue, you know? So I know this variable. And this X can take either one or zero, right? So that's why it's X is gonna be like changing. It's to be, it's either W1 was, one or w1 was uh, x right so x uh, so w1 was one sorry w1 was zero so because x takes the value of either one or zero then i can expand this equation in this sense so that means x would only take because the sum you know this sum the you basically just take when x takes one this becomes the first sum that means x was one so w2 one given w1 was uh, so like let's take the zero part first W2 when uh, equal to one, given W1 was zero, and this one is zero plus, because this is a summation, you know, and this one. And you can calculate now. And you will know um, that this is how you would calculate whether it changed or not. Because you would change if you had only one row, you, you know, there is no, you will not write this equation. The equation would have changed, okay? So this is how you would, mathematically reason especially the monty python you can write it this way and you will come i think already we we uh, we mentioned it already but it will come you will through this calculation you will get that the change the probability of change uh, or the probability of c door uh, the the diamond being on on door c would you would calculate it to be 66.6 using this equation okay so in um, statistical modeling, when we talk of statistical modeling, we're talking about beyond, of course, the input row data, which means you would get some inputs and then you would transfer that input into features. Basically, how many tires it has, the body size it has, the engine, the things. We translate that input into some form of some some form you know and in, this is what is in the machine learning sense we have to extract the features right and that's that's all we are not learning we are there's a human involved to learn how to best extract this feature in such a way that i can get a good classification for example if it's classification or regression so that means there is a human involved or there's another process involved in learning the best features 
the best representation of this car because we can't take this car and and give it to the algorithm the algorithm the machine learning algorithms we have needs certain types of features and there needs to be an intelligent system that efficiently extracts those features so that the, the it suits the the machine learning algorithm and and then it predicts well so there is a process involved this is called the person learns the representation the best representation of this car you know whether they you know describe it in a text for nlp whether they kind of like the mileage and whatever they whatever in a tabular form or things like that and then we do some modeling and then we get a car or not car for example in the deep learning sense it's very different we are the deep learning why it's different from machine learning is it's the only thing that's different is that it it captures the model it incorporates also a human element inside it that means it tries to learn the best features as well so it has components deep learning has components to learn features automatic feature learning which means representation okay and that makes of course deep learning more suitable and but also data like because because of that and it has lots of parameters therefore for that reason it needs lots of data machine learning could work with hundreds of cars deep learning to even start it needs like thousands of cars right so that's the difference in them so statistical modeling therefore requires formulation of the problem as well as selecting the associated features i think let me stop i mean this is probably uh, you know good and it's a good step to to stop um and any question uh, worker. okay so uh it's like if there is teacher selection or on deep learning so what what is the difference between the the causal inference and the deep learning it, it, I mean, more, more causal is more of like so in deep learning as well there is something in between right what does what do you have you have what you call i mean uh, causal inference is more machine learning but you can causal inference is a modeling a technique just like random variable sense uh, more it's a formalism sorry like you can use it as in a machine learning context that means you extract features and you give it or also in the deep learning context that you actually have the network to be more causal you know or aware of causal so it, it is not you know random forest you can have deep learning with random forest right it's the formalism like it's it it is about the only differences are the usual techniques in machine learning you you just use only a simpler like a, a representation that you or you already represented this thing you're not you're not having a general representation while in the deep whenever we say deep learning you're trying to learn you're not even there of course you know the data maybe you give it as a picture but maybe also you give it as maybe as a as a text of course you are learning some you are representing the car in any way here as well but it is not necessary deep learning as a technique can handle any types whether it's image whether it's that whether it's that it is capable so that's why it's different otherwise it's even here there is a representation it's just that it's no requirement the philosophy of deep learning is to try to learn the best features it doesn't it is less sensitive to your features it's trying to generalize and the more raw the 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 raw data you give it the better for machine learning the raw you give it it's worse so that's like let's take it away and causal inference is a way of like the, the the extraction of the graph or the construction of the graph the graph can be constructed by deep learning or the graph can be constructed by as machine learning does that answer Abu Bakr? uh yeah yeah uh, so like 
it seems like deep learning is better than amen so the only no, don't, don't be in a hurry don't be in a hurry it's just only appreciate what their difference is not to conclusion what is better and what is worse it is problem dependent so the, data dependent the problem is the matter or the data yes the problem matters because if you have a smaller data and whatever whatever machine learning is a good way to go probably and if you have a large data and they have large computation maybe deep learning is good so it, it is there isn't what is you know we're not here hierarch creating hierarchy between entities that naturally don't have hierarchy they're just suitable for different purposes So in a way, like understand what it is, not the conclusion of it. Understand what their differences and where the pros and cons of them. For many things in science, don't conclude, don't give class entities classifications so that says like, oh, that's good, that's bad. There isn't such thing. It's just mathematics, they are equal, except just they apply for different cases. And having, an, having a clearer understanding of what the differences is and even machine learning is a very general class it could include also deep learning but in the context of terminology and semantics meaning we need to like let's say something that a model that like that that does well when you are architecting the feature and when you when it works with a smaller data let's call it machine learning it's again you know these are just terminologies but the mathematics is Whichever go you go, it's mathematics in part and statistics in part. Yeah, does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, it does. So, uh, so like, what what I was trying to say is, ideally, if we had uh, really large amount of data and yes. large, uh, large amount of computation, always. Yeah. So we always choose deep learning. I mean, I mean it, 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 it does, it, it tries, yeah, and, and you have to test it, but it, it, it does, and that's why we, we saw it empirically, that's the case. Someone can come and falsify that tomorrow, but yeah, you know, so currently, we, are, we, are, we are in the era where AI is ruling the world, and that's, you know, AI is just cool now. Okay. in a way that it's not cool just because you know it's uh, it's not just only fashion it's because it does the work right it, it it really does so many things that before none of machine learning techniques were able to do and we haven't gained much but just by increasing this represent basically as i said by just not representing the thing ourselves deep learning seems to do well and we were the problem. But we were the solution when we didn't have that, that much data. We become the problem when we have lots of data. And by removing us and just the mathematics to figure it out themselves, just using a good architecture like transformers seems to do the great job. Okay. So as you can see, it's very small numbers of slides, but hopefully you've got the test, the, the aspects. And I think what I would have liked to cover was of course, like, as I said, what is probability and how do we assign probabilities? Normally there are two parts, syntax and semantics. And then the most important part is of course, these notations, understanding what PX, Normally, whatever you see PX, X is a random variable and the probability of event. I think, as I said earlier, it's about events and it's about uh, probability of event X given background information. And uh, and when you have like written like that with uh, upper, like a bar on top, it's the probability of all events except the X. And then you have probability of X or Y. This is the sums probability. And then the end probability products probability and then the conditional probability. That's it. Every mathemat, every probability is done by this. It's by the calculus of, the calculus of this is what you call statistics. And the, then the rules on how, you know, 
you associate these things is defined by some rule, product rule, normalization, and marginalization. With this only, basically with these rules and then with these notations, you can basically all every all the Bayesian statistics is basically by written by that. So that's it. With this, this the, these rules are called axioms, and those are notations. And with these two, you derive everything that has been derived so far in probability, in Bayesian probability. So nothing more. And after that is abstraction and mathematics and all that. And the same rule is that if you have x or y given i, the way you write it is that probability of x given i plus probability of y given i minus the common, that means the, the pro, like that, that part of the product rule. So this normally that means the probability of it's a union or is a union, the union of two variables given one condition is the probability of that condition given the probability of you know the one part of it given that condition probability of like given one condition and the, the the denominator subtracted out so this is more of the denominator and the product rule defines how to write the denominator the denominator is of is just is a, you know probability of x earlier we saw this probability of x given y times probability of y that's how it's written normalization is that if you have in your sample space the entire earlier we said the zero and one are just for that random variable it's space the only two possibilities it's either red or not red therefore in that sense the the normalization applies when you know the total space the total sample space so that's why probability of x and probability of everything else but not x must be summed to one so that's the probability theorem or roots i mean it's axioms and then the marginalization is then the, the most important part. Probably, if you want to find probability of x given i, and you know it depends on another variable called y, then you can normalize, you can extract this one by conditioning like that. It is the probability of x and y plus x and everything else but not y. So the two is called marginalization, and it's written as this variable. I think we saw this exactly earlier. And so then I had, I think the, the very first part um, is, I mean, we will stop, but next time we will continue. You should build intuition how this is the case, but we will continue that one. Okay, any questions? If not, then... Let's stop here. Wonderful. I hope it was a slightly, um, yes, I will share the slide. Um, I will send it now to Rodas and she can share.